All right, collective, let's get into a reading. So you're going to notice I have a microphone we're testing out today. Today's test day. You can let me know down below if you like it or not. I'm going to be honest. I've done a little bit of a test peek, and I don't know if I'm a fan. It makes me sound like I'm kind of in a tunnel. Maybe I'm biased. I don't know. Put it down below. Okay, so we are going to jump into a Divine Masculine reading. I want to see three cards of what this person wants to say to you, and then we're going to dig into this connection and see what this person is feeling. Keep an open mind. As always, Patreon and channel members get to see these first. So let's see. What is the divine masculine feeling right this moment? Oh, shit. We need to let each other go. But I want you. You could be haunting this person through music. I don't know why, but I'm hearing the song Sucker by Jonas Brothers. I'm a sucker for you. Okay. This is interesting. We've got contradicting energy. We've got them wanting to let you go, but them also recognizing that they feel like they can be themselves with you. And that's what makes them want you more. That could also be one of the reasons why they're having such a hard time fully letting you go, wanting to start over. Oh, it was my fault, but I was blaming you. So someone here could be recognizing that they were playing the blame game. You know, one of the things I learned when I was in marriage therapy forever ago was that if you're quick to try to play the blame game, all that's going to do is get you to a point where you're pointing fingers. So someone here could be recognizing that it doesn't matter who's at fault. It only matters that we're having a problem, we're having an issue, and we need to fix it. This person could be wondering if you're happy without them. So at one point, this person felt like it was in both of your guys' best interests to let it go. But now they're kind of changing their tune, changing their mind, and wondering if you're feeling the same. I'm hearing the song, Sometimes I Think About You, wonder, I, wonder If You're Out There Somewhere Thinking About Me. Now that song is about a mother-daughter dynamic where she was put up for adoption. But there is a an energy here of them wondering if you think about them. Let's see. So Divine Masculine, how is the Divine Masculine viewing this connection right this moment? How do they view this current connection? As something that they want to give to, but something that they're conflicted about. So right now, they view this connection as something that they want to take action towards and to give to. But there is internal conflict. But in this moment, there's insane desire, okay? How do they view you? Give me a little bit more because I have the Tower and the Magician. They could view you as someone who has rewritten something in your life. You could have changed something. You could be redoing something. You could have moved. You could have reevaluated everything in your life. They see you as someone who doesn't get stuck and discontent. You're the kind of person where if it's not working for you, it's got to go. We got to cut it out. I don't do bored. I don't do discontentment. And if that means crumbling a a damn foundation, so be it. You're the kind of person where if there's multiple things in the house that you don't like, you would be like, you know what, we should just bulldoze the whole house and start over. That's kind of how they view you. They view you in the energy of like nothing is impossible for me to achieve or go after because I'm not making it impossible. If I'm not satisfied with something, I'm going to take action. If I'm not satisfied with something, I'm going to change it. That's how they see you. That's how they view you. They view you as someone who is the maker of their life. And you kind of work in cahoots with the universe to get what you want. How do they currently feel for you? Good God at the desire. So we have, again, feeling conflicted, but a lot of desire here to build some sort of union. Feeling like you're either a soulmate or something from their past that they can't let go of. 
yeah, again, feeling like they want balance, but also not wanting to take impulsive action and not wanting to come off as a player if they take action. So somebody can be worried about how you're going to perceive their action that they take when they decide to take it. Are you going to see me as a player? Or are you going to see me as someone who's just impulsive and all of a sudden now I want to go in? I want to play my cards are out. Like that's the energy I'm getting. What do they like about you? They like that you keep things close to your chest. The Seven of Swords can be a liar card, but I don't feel like you lie. I feel like you're the kind of person where it's like, if it's my business, it's my, it's my business. So they know that if they decided to give you a relationship, you would be the kind of relationship that if you guys were having problems at home, you would keep it to yourself. You wouldn't go around telling everyone, well, you know, me and so-and-so got in a fight today and I think we're going to break up. Your mood might be different, but you're not going to go around telling everybody your business. That could be something that they like about you. You keep things hidden. If it's nobody's business, it's nobody's business. You could also be big on not having people in your relationship. You know how some people will tell their family and their friends everything that's going on. They'll tell them the good, the bad, the ugly, the things that they think's happening, the things that ain't happening, all of the above. And it can get your family members really invested so much so that they'll go to bat for you when you might forgive it. They won't. They don't see you as that kind of person. You're the kind of person where you're like, listen, what we're going through, we're going through. It doesn't have to do with y'all. So mind your business, stay out of it. And they really like that about you. They like that you keep your guys's problems under your your roof okay what do they not like about you they don't like that you've pulled back from them they also don't like that you gave them a message of truth or a message of bad news some of you there is a behavior, there is a, a conversation, there is an instance when you acted in a way and they did not agree with it. You could have said something to them, you could have called judgment on them, you could have called them out. You said something along the lines of, I need to rest, I need to heal, I need time from you, I need space, that ain't, this ain't it. Some of you could have even told this person that you didn't see them as someone that you could marry or someone that you could have consistency with. So you had to let them go. That could be for some of you. Okay. And that could have been a message of truth or a message of bad news. It could have been an energy of like, I care about you, but don't get it up. I care about my growth and my stability more. I can care about someone and see clearly that they're not meant for me and they're not bringing value into my life. That could have been what took place here. And at one point, they could have been like, whatever, let, let's let it go. You don't want to fight for me. I'm not fighting for you. But now this person could be a little more along the lines of, but I can be myself with you. Actually, I want you. I mean, I don't like how maybe you detach from me or are quick to make choices on your own. But maybe I was blaming you when some of it was my fault. Okay, someone's starting to accept responsibility. Here's what's happening. What do they not like about the connection? Some sort of indulgence. So they could regret or be sad about some sort of indulgence. You guys could spend a lot of money together. This could be the kind of connection where it started off very hot, flingy, passionate. They're doing some sense of self-reflection. I do know that. They're looking at this connection and they're remembering parts of this connection where maybe it was about you guys being fulfilled and not necessarily fulfilling the other. That could be something that they don't like. Is how can we pour into one another without one of us feeling like we're getting gypped, we're being scammed, we're being fucked over or used is kind of what I'm getting. What do they like about the connection? It gives them a lot of happiness and clarity and it makes them, I want to say it makes them feel young again. That's what I wanted to say. Nine of Wands gives me the energy of like, I want to do this. Here's an example. Before I had a kid, I didn't want to do a damn thing. I didn't want to go to water parks. 
I didn't want to get out of my comfort zone. There are things now that I do, now that I have a kid, that I would never do without a kid. She makes me feel the need to go after my passions and explore. And sometimes she will add to it. That's how this person feels about you. So let's give an example. My kid is big on if I have a bad idea or if I have an impulsive idea, I'll be like, oh my God, we should go do this. She will 100% go, we should do that. We should do that. And she makes me feel young again. So I will go to water parks and spend hours and hours playing with a bunch of children, living my best little life out, feeling like a child when I'm not. But I wouldn't be doing that if it wasn't for her. She makes me feel young again. There are things where I'm like, I could never. And she's like, oh, you can. Put those on, mom. You're totally doing this with us. And she gets me out of my comfort zone. That's how this person feels about you. They feel that you get them out of their comfort zone. They feel that in moments where they would be like, I could never. I'm too old for that. I shouldn't do that. Uh, I can't do that anymore. You're the energy that comes in and goes, the hell you can. Life is too short. We're doing this. And they love that about this relationship. And they love that about you. You make them want to act young again, to have fun, to be carefree. What are they hoping is going to happen? They're hoping you guys are going to collaborate, but they're also, this is someone who's remaining very logical. I hope we can collaborate, but I'm also not dumb, Danielle. I know I'm going to have, I'm going to have to open up some sense of dialogue for us to be able to do that. Fear. Fear. Their fear is that they're going to put in a lot of effort and dedication into this and that it's not going to turn out in their favor. So they are scared that they're going to come in and say, hey, I want to fix this. I want to make this work. And it's all that work for nothing. All that spilling truth for nothing. Are they going to take action? Right now, they're kind of guarded. They're keeping things close to their chest. They're, this relationship is making them want to open up. But I feel like for a lot of you, they have to continue to be pushed to feeling lonely. It's like the more this person feels lonely, the more that they can't find you and anyone else, the more that they're going to feel lack and the more it's going to make them want to come to you. Sad, cold, hard truth. That's what I'm saying. Okay. They could have also had an illusion around what giving and receiving really looked like. And that illusion could be changing. So what's the action look like? They are scared that once they try to come in and reunite with you or bring this back together, you're going to leave them left out in the cold. Once they're ready to complete a cycle, they feel that you... Might only see this through negative eyes now where you once hoped and wished. You might now be blocked from the hoping and the wishing. Have you ever hoped and wished that you would be with someone and you're like, but Danielle, I want to marry that person. But then when something happens, it can just give you the ick like this. And then you're like, I never want to marry them. I don't even want to talk to them. And it's like you can't see them through the eyes you once did because now you see them through such a different lens that there's no going back. That's how this person is. They're, they're scared that that's how you feel for them now. They're scared that at one point you felt like they were a dream come true. You felt like they were a wish granted. It was everything you hoped for and you continue to hope. But they're also scared now that you're going to be like, eh, I don't know why I should hope for this. Eh, I, don't, I don't think this is my wish fulfillment. That's what they're scared of because at one point they could have maybe had this in the bag and now they don't know if they have it in the bag. Now it's going to take a little more effort and dedication, consistency, loyalty. Wanting to communicate about something that took place. Wanting to communicate about a new beginning where choices were made that then led to someone walking away.
Okay, again, if you gave this person any sense of communication, they've reflected on it. Okay? They've reflected on it. So what do you need to know before they come to you? What you need to know is that this is all your work coming back to you for you to reap harvest. Do you want to? That's literally what this reading is. This is all of your work and your dedication coming back. You're finally getting to pick the fruit off that tree. You once watered this tree, this person. You now get to decide if you want it back, yes or no. I am seeing that when it comes to maybe what you guys want in a future, when it comes to values, morals, higher levels of love, it might look different. One of you might want to get married. One of you might not. One of you might want to live together. One of you might be more willing to live separate. There could be differences around that, okay? But I'm also seeing an energy of not wanting to live with regrets. So someone here is going to try to come in and open up some sort of communication or dialogue. This could take place very quickly. They could want to talk about the past and a leap that was taken that ended up in disappointment. And they're going to tell you that they've been really burdened, that this has really bothered them. So when this person comes in, they're going to tell you, you know, this has really bothered me. I don't like not talking to you. I don't like us not being friends. I don't like us not seeing each other. And at one point, I was okay with us letting each other go. But now, that you've told me whatever you told them. You gave them a message of truth or a message of bad news. I don't know what you said, but it really hit the spot. They did self-reflection on that. And since then, they have felt overwhelmed. They have felt burdened. So they feel that you need to know this new truth. Now, you knowing this new truth will either make this relationship or break it. That's going to be up to you. I do see, though, that this person is going to be coming in and accepting some sense of like accountability you're going to be able to notice that this cycle has been completed because there will be a different version of this person coming forth where they were maybe once very clingy to what they were feeling, what they were thinking. They're going to be a little more forthcoming to express sadness, disappointment, if they've missed you, how that felt, um, things that have burdened them, things that have bothered them. Maybe at one point this person was like, eh, I ain't telling you. Sh now they're like, you know what? I'll tell you everything. Why, why does it matter? You're not going to use it against me. And if you do, that's a reflection of you, not them. So, all right, leaving it here. See you guys soon.